But you think the Taliban wouldn't exist if the Karzai government was more legitimate? I think that the Taliban would almost certainly exist. The question is, would the Taliban actually be capable of providing a competition within Afghanistan for the support of the people uh, and a competition in which the Taliban is able to provide more services for some of the population of Afghanistan than the Karzai government mm -hmm. itself. What we learned in Iraq is that uh, Prime Minister Maliki was a weak leader at the beginning of his term and was not capable of extending his writ through Iraq, nor was he capable of securing the population, and he was tolerating within his government malign actions. Supporters of death squads uh, were in official positions within his government and abusing their power. And I think that this is actually something that we can draw lessons from because General Petraeus and Ambassador Crocker, along with all of our military and civilian efforts in Afghanistan, went after the abuses of power uh, that were being undertaken by the Maliki government and actually confronted a number of players from Maliki down to smaller, uh, lower level general officers, lower level officials in order to compel them to stop those behaviors that were actually alienating the people from the state. And I think that this kind of aggressive interaction, both with Karzai and members of his administration, is part of the key to success in Afghanistan. Do you think that would be effective? In other words, once you clean up corruption, because I know they've, what, just appointed an Afghan panel to kind of, and people wonder if that's like the fox guarding the hen house, uh, you know, to, to weed out corruption in the Afghan government. But isn't it... Isn't it much more complicated than just that? It, it's extremely difficult to, for, for a foreign power with however many troops, to change the political culture of another country. I mean, it, an obvious analogy for Afghanistan is Vietnam, because there we have a rural insurgency um, with a, a sanctuary across the border. Pakistan. Pakistan, in this case, and a weak and corrupt and increasingly illegitimate uh, central government. But Afghanistan should be a lot easier than Vietnam because, as you say, the Afghans had an experience of the Taliban and they rejected it. I mean, 2001 was a true liberation of that country. The Taliban have had a second life because the Afghan government gave them that chance and I think because many of the mistakes that the U.S. government and the international community made, mainly mistakes of omission, allowed the Taliban to have that second chance. What do you mean mistakes of omission? <clears throat> Basically, we turned our backs on that country. We never had anywhere close to the number of troops that we needed there. Um, the uh, money we did spend was largely wasted on big contracts for private contractors who sent 90% of the money back to the United States. Um, we took our eye off Afghanistan. I mean, it's quite, it's pretty simple. And, and also, our, our policy there was not to secure the country. Our policy was essentially to keep as small and light a presence as possible. And neutralize the, the terrorists. And, and try to focus on, you know, the terrorists at the border. And essentially we, we forgot that there was a Taliban. It turned out the Taliban had not been defeated. They had really withdrawn across the border to Pakistan and reconstituted themselves. And a lot of the old figures are now back in play.